Amherst Township Trustees called to order. We stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lynch? Here. Urig? Yes. Kish is here. From August 11th, the regular meeting of the Amherst Township Trustees. The meeting was called to order at 7.01 p.m. by Chairman Lynch. Pledge to the flag. Roll call. Abraham Lynch, Urig, and Kish were present. Attending, Case Marsh, G. Lynch, L. Ashley, R. Cerrone, and C. Cerny. 8.1.20, a motion by Urig, seconded by Abraham, to approve the minutes of the July 28th, 2020 regular meeting as read. All ayes. 8.220, a motion by Urig, seconded by Abraham, to approve payment of bills and approve the financial report with reservations. All ayes. There were no audience concerns. Trustee Lynch noted several items on the agenda were to be discussed, starting with CARES Act fund appropriations. Trustee Lynch requested Township Administrator Ashley to begin collecting detail from hourly staff for time spent that can be categorized under the CARES Act and to also put together detail that can be provided to the fiscal officer. It was discussed that $5,268 for the generator installation can be covered under these funds. Several other items were discussed to utilize these funds. Dumpster days in October was discussed and if these funds can be utilized to cover costs of potentially hiring staff to man this event, keeping our road staff away from exposure to COVID through this event. The risk of exposure of one of our road crew could lead to the entire township staff and elected officials being affected. There will also need to be rules in place such as masks mandatory for drop-off and contactless drop-off with residents remaining in their vehicles. Trustee Lynch will speak with prosecutor's office for ruling of use of funds in this way. 8320, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, to authorize procurement and installation of seven touchless hygiene modification faucets for all hand and wash stations located in Amherst Township Hall, all eyes. 8420, motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, to authorize procurement, setup, and testing of four channel receiver with four handheld microphones at the amount not to exceed $500, all eyes. 8520, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, to authorize procurement from Technology Systems Integration, LLC, items identified on attached estimate for audio video equipment installation and support materials not to exceed $2,500, all eyes. 8620, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, the trustees authorize cameras and surveillance devices for security monitoring for yard waste recycling area in lieu of controlled access gate, all eyes. Trustee Lynch will be checking with legal counsel regarding upgrading our video capabilities for Zoom or online meetings and or if utilizing the county's meeting rooms for those types of meetings is something that is available to the township, as well if costs incurred by hiring a service to clean the township hall while our contracted cleaning service from Murray Ridge was on furlough due to COVID. Under correspondence, Fiscal Officer Kish noted she received and provided copies to the trustees of an email received from Kristen Brandon from Lorain County Community Development canceling the August 18th Subdivision Review Committee meeting regarding Hampshire Farms. Fiscal Officer Kish also noted that we had received a note summons on a complaint receiving, received naming Amherst Township as a defendant in a case involving the county treasurer and a Thomas Dunphy in Vermilion. Tom Mangan contacted my office that he would be working on getting Amherst Township dropped from this case due to it being a different individual and our case against Thomas Dunphy in Amherst Township was mistaken, mistakenly picked up and added to this case. Under reports, there was none for ambulance, none for sheriff, under zoning, our Cerrone reported nine permits month to date, including one new home, bringing the year to date total to 10. BZA is holding area variance requests on August 12th for 44706 Stang Road and August 19th for 6117 Oberlin Road. Both meetings will be held at the Amherst Township Hall at 7 p.m. Under Road Park and Cemetery, Superintendent Smarsh noted mowing and trimming in the parks and cemetery and another round of roadside mowing. A large storm sewer repair on Allendale. Five catch basins are slated for repair on Hidden Glen, Glen in conjunction with the engineer's office, and he has four more slated that the road crew is doing themselves. Also working on identifying the next road projects. Trustee Lynch noted that round 35 projects new deadline is the first week of November, and they are also changing the scoring methodology. 
This gives us a little more time to put our projects together for submission. Under complaints, they are all being handled by the designated individual. 8720, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, to enter into executive session at 848 p.m. according to ORC sections 121.22 G3 for conferences with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are subject of pending or imminent court action regarding Amherst Consolidated Properties and ORC sections 121.22 G5 regarding the Older Americans Act. All ayes. 8820, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, moved to return from executive session at 9.25 p.m. All ayes. Under la unfinished business, the last item on the agenda had to do with the noise resolution and suggested changes put together by a resident. The current noise ordinance states on B, on private property and sound or noise, which is likely to cause annoyance. I think that's supposed to be any, sorry. On private property, any sound or noise, which is likely to cause annoyance, inconvenience, or disturbance to a person of ordinary sensibilities by means of a sound system, musical instruments, or a sound system in a motor vehicle on said property, which is plainly audible to a person standing at a distance of 50 feet or more from the source of said sound or noise. Musical instruments include, but are not limited to drums, guitars, pianos, and organs. The suggested change is as follows. On private property, any sound or noise which is likely to cause annoyance, inconvenience, or disturbance to a person of ordinary sensibilities by means of a sound system, musical instruments, or a sound system in a motor vehicle on said property between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Musical instruments include, but are not limited to drums, guitars, pianos, and organs. Trustee Urig noted that much time went into researching the original ordinance and surrounding areas noise ordinances are similar. He noted you must have a quantifier in there so the 50 feet needs to remain in there. The trustees concurred to leave the noise ordinance as is. The trustees wanted to be very clear that this ordinance was put in place at the request of the sheriff to have legislative aid in handling and resolving noise complaints. The trustees do not enforce this, the sheriff's office does. The next regular Board of Trustees meeting will be held Tuesday, August 25th, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the Amherst Township Hall, 8-9-20, a motion by Abraham, seconded by Yurik, to adjourn at 9.36 p.m., all ayes. Thanks, Chris. David, are there any changes or corrections to the August I 11th? Have, I have nothing. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve the August 11th meeting minutes as presented. I will second. Lynch? Yes. Yurik? Yes. And you guys also have in front of you the July 2020 credit card account transaction detail, uh, which uh, is pretty basic. The only thing that there was a credit on there for a canceled OACT conference uh, reimbursement for room and board. Um, bought some stamps for everybody. That's pretty, pretty basic. Nothing out of the ordinary. I'll receive. Do you have anything to add, Neil? Not on the bills, I just, um, but, but I on do want On the credit cards? Pardon? Mm -hmm. No, nor on the credit cards. Um, so we'll get to that before we go to that resolution, though, David, with the other part on the financial reports here. I just want to point out for our road and bridge, and Chris, I see you got the second half taxes that come in here. Um, so if you look at just the road and bridge account, uh, revenue $382,787 realized between the uh, license plate fee and uh, motor gas fees right now, you know, figure about another 100000 total. And the only reason I'm pointing that out, David, is later we'll be discussing the road projects because Kevin did get the quotes for Dewey Road, which are in your packet. So if you just keep those figures in mind when we get to that, because we've got to decide, you know, if we're going to split that project in two, which is the way he's got it quoted, so we have that ability or, or try and handle it all as one. But if there's, if there's nothing else with all of the receipts here, um, I guess first is I'm going to make a, a motion to um, that the credit card uh, 
account transaction detail has been reviewed per policy and the card statement is accepted as presented subject to investigation. I will second. Lynch? Yes. Urig? Yes. And then as far as the remainder of the financial reports, uh, David, which uh, you know, Chris already reviewed as far as the one particular bill, and I assume this is the fire department yes. for the largest one on there. Yes. A service with the city of Amherst. Um, I'll make, an, uh, make a motion to pay the bills and approve the financial reports as presented with reservation. So move, uh, second. So Lynch? second. Yes. Urig? Yes. Um, there were two. One other thing I wanted to bring up under financials, and it was regarding the Roth deferred comp. I was able to get answers. That is able to be set up. It's not very easy, but it can be set up. I would probably start for those who are interested the first part of the fourth quarter, so October show up in October's payment but if that is providing all the paperwork gets back because you need to pass a resolution which would be at the next meeting then you anybody who's interested has to fill out paperwork then it has to be approved by them and come back to us before I could set it up so I'm giving myself ample time to be able to set that up but it is available in UAN to handle so have the resolution at the next meeting. Correct. And then whoever is already on deferred camp, camp will have to make that decision if they want it to remain the way it is or if they want to switch it over to the rock. And what we'll do is try and see if one of their individuals can be available for training on this also just to explain things to people. All right, thanks. Anything else, Chris? Um, under financial? Um, no, I would do it in correspondence. Okay, at this time I'd like to welcome everyone in attendance. If anyone has anything to bring before the board, please raise your hand. Okay, then we'll move on. All right, just as a preliminary here, uh, in addition to the regular items on the agenda, is um, we're going to spend a good amount of time going over the CARES Act funds. We also are going to have to have some discussions on the budget relative to the resurfacing of Dewey Road for next year, next round, but for application that is now due in November. That's why I pointed out those um, particular accounts for the roads. Um, we also are going to have to have just some light discussion with the assumption that we will have an energizing community grant from NOPEC available next year. We won't know that till like the November, December time frame when they have their annual meeting. Um, that's when that decision is made and that may be approved. Realize that the amount will be in the neighborhood of $16,000 if it's similar to the past. You know, some of this is, I'm trying to be conservative on that because the value available in that grant is going down since the um, competitors have been real good at marketing alternative sources uh, with teaser rates that people buy into and don't pay close attention and as time goes on the, the rate gets way up there and you know it's just like insurance people are reluctant to review things like that and get it corrected and then we will need an executive session um, to discuss the Amherst Consolidated Properties case number 20CV200199. Um, that's just going to be to bring the trustees um, uh, in zoning and roads up to date. Uh, Colin, it's pretty much everything I assume your attorneys already discussed with you. Um, and then going in the timing going forward on this as far as what the time schedule is with the courts. So that's just the preliminary. So with that, we're going to move into um, correspondence and uh, Chris, other than items that you know we're going to deal with, the one on the CARES Act, we'll deal when we deal with CARES Act. Do you have anything else there? I just wanted to let, uh, make you aware, I did mention at the last meeting, but the new van is covered under our insurance. That was all taken care of. I did get the paperwork, so. The which was? With the new Dodge van under oh, our, yeah, our, our, I had 
requested that they add it, it's been added. I just wanted to let you know that for sure. And uh, we have been dismissed from the Dumpy from Vermilion case, so that paperwork right. came through. David, do you have any correspondence? I have nothing at this time, Neil. Okay, the first item in your packet, and I did send this out um, yesterday from the Ohio Township Association. Uh, the key item is, and I don't know if this was just something the state was holding back for a reason, why this has come about now, but uh, the state of Ohio did, controlling board did release another $175 million in federal CARES Act funding to local governments. Um, this is all the funding that their distribution is spelled out in the State House Bill 481. Um, these are federal funds. Uh, their recommendation and estimating what the funding level would be that you would receive is it's going to be roughly half of what communities already receive since the original um, funding level, I believe that was around $350 million that was distributed to all of the local governments in the state of Ohio. So what's that mean to Amherst Township? Essentially it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of around 38,000 additional funds. But realize that unless Congress changes something, which they had discussed they were going to do if there was a new stimulus bill, um, these funds can only be used um, that for expenditures that are necessary because they're incurred due to the public health emergency with respect to the coronavirus, um, that they weren't budgeted in the current budget year that was passed towards the end of March that we uh, passed that, and that they, uh, the expenditures occurred between March 1st and December 30th of 2020. So those are the three key conditions. Those haven't changed. Uh, so with that, we've got to make sure we comply with those conditions, but now there's an additional 38,000. Um, I see Chris, you're here. I, I forget what the amount was that Amherst received, but essentially they'll get half of that also because this is all local governments. Um, so that's the first item dealing with the CARES Act, just to put things into perspective. Uh, now, there's another document here. It's titled CARES Act uh, Fund Expenditure. Um, the first one's an email that Linda sent off to the prosecutor's office on some of the items that we discussed at the last meeting. Uh, specifically, one was where uh, during the peak of the um, pandemic, uh, Murray Ridge, who typically does some of the housekeeping and cleaning of the township hall, uh, had discontinued their services. So the township went out and obtained an alternate service and our question was, could we apply the full cost of this alternate service or just the um, incremental increase, since they were more expensive, obviously, than Middle Rid or Murray Ridge? Uh, the prosecutor's ruling on that is uh, the incremental increase in cost is eligible, but not the full amount. So, you know, you're not talking huge dollars there. I think it was only one time, Linda, that we used them. So. Yes, they're finished because Murray Ridge is back in service on a limited basis. So. We have not seen them yet. I'm still in process. Oh. We're having trouble with transportation. They're what? something we'll have to look at that 
because we've got to watch how we use these funds. As we've discussed before, we're going to keep some back in reserve as a just in case. You know, if anybody here, uh, whether someone here or someone in their family tests positive, and if the health department ends up quarantining our staff, which, you know, full time is too, but for all the rest here also and part time on the road crew, um, we would have to subcontract with someone else to perform the work because the work, the demand's still there. Um, but the option we have there. Linda, is we can, with other groups and small businesses, provide funds, some on grants, which, you know, may actually help, and whether it's getting somebody else, you know, as we did before, or actually in the transportation to get them up here, okay, and working with Murray Rich. So that's where one local agency can help another. Um, the second item was the emergency management that's where Town Kelly had indicated that any of the, like the mask and whatnot that we have here that require specific environmental controls, uh, to make sure you hold them in those environmental controls. And that, that was the question, if a portion of the utilities uh, can be used, since obviously we ended up, we were fortunate um, through NOPAC to receive the cloth mask at no charge. But we have to keep those individually packaged and keep them in an environmentally conditioned area. So you can read the prosecutor's response there, but again, that's going to be a very small expense item. Uh, the larger one, and Kevin, this is going to be for you because it's going to put additional work on you, at least in the initial point. Um, we had budgeted for next year for the repairs and resurfacing of uh, and sealing. I'm sorry, not resurfacing, but the repairs and sealing of the uh, walkways and parking lots in the park. And if you notice, you see more people are using them because there's more people out looking for things to do and trying to get outside. And if you go down, particularly on the walkway, I haven't looked at the parking lot. Um, but Kevin, as you're aware, if you get in the treat area, there's a few raised areas now that are tripping hazards that'll have to be cut out. And I'm sure if you get on the far north side, you're going to see the larger gap. So that's not going to be a simple, you know, put down some sealants. That's going to have to be repaired. Um, and then in the past, you guys did the crack sealing. You had an outside service do the, seal, the overall sealing and the uh, striping. But it may be better to just so that you guys are stay available on the roads look at having somebody quote that whole thing. So that's the burden on you is to get the quotes. Um, we've got the okay here as far as from the prosecutor's office that that will comply for the use of the funds. But we've also got to have this set up by October, spent by December. And obviously this is something we want to do in the warm months. You know, we don't want to be doing this, you know, even November you're getting pretty late there and hoping for a good day. So this is something you'd have to move on in terms of getting quotes, okay? And um, I still would prefer if you can get multiple quotes, but I know the time crunch on this. Um, so the trustees can handle that later, so try and get them. And if they don't come in and we only have one, at that point, David, the board has to make a decision. Are we going, you know, because that's our internal policy as far as the threshold level on the quotes. It won't violate any statute but we may have to pass a resolution basically overriding our current internal policy if people are slow in getting their quotes back. Um, but do the best you can, okay? And, and I know it takes time getting people down there and having them review it and, you know, then having them get the quotes back to you and then you know how they always have some slight difference in them and we gotta try and give a rational comparison between them. I appreciate Linda getting that put together. So you've got those three items and the prosecutor's response. Um, there then was a fourth item. Um, this was the one, if you recall, at the last meeting, Trustee Abraham and working with Kevin. We originally were trying, since we had canceled dumpster days and we don't want our employees over there 
working with people or challenging people as they do in the past. And usually it's when you see someone come in a trailer or a large dump truck. You know, you're generally not going to char challenge the small vehicles, you know, unless you see a lot of them. Um, but those larger ones, many times they're commercial individuals or people not from our township dumping things that they shouldn't be dumping or even dumping eligible items in the yard waste area, but they aren't authorized to dump them in because it costs us money to grind that up and get rid of it. Um, well, we discontinued doing that. We don't want the employees getting up there close to people. So we thought we could put in some sort of gated service that would be beneficial and our residents would get uh, whether it was worked through separate cards, whether it was worked through an app or a license that they could gain access. But after looking at the cost, in addition to the ongoing maintenance in the long term, the decision was we're not going there. So Kevin's asked about um, putting up some cameras that would monitor things and record things. It would also need signage to make people aware that they're under surveillance, that it's residents only that are allowed to uh, put the yard waste there what items have to be there, where they have to be located and separated. Um, and so all that wasn't conveyed to the prosecutor. What was conveyed to the prosecutor was putting cameras up. Well, if you look at his um, response to the cameras, which he did separate, is that the, um, he didn't think the cameras would qualify for the CARES Act funding unless you could drive show a direct tie to the coronavirus and show that this is necessary and also that it's an immediate need. And I believe that once he understands all this, you know, and discussing it verbally, he thought, well, that's more than he understood. It may be, but put it in writing. And um, so what you'll see, I'm going to go to the next sheet, which is on two pages and go to page two. Um, Linda's put a summary together there for the yard waste recycling camera and signage installation resulting from coronavirus pandemic. I mean, that's the reason, I mean, this is the whole reason this all started with the effort to look at this. Um, so our employees didn't have to be there. So this is just a more detailed explanation. Um, Linda may still do some adjustment to this. But this captures the main points and then we'll have to wait for the prosecutor's response on this. Um, Kevin, I don't know if you've done more research on these cameras or if you have anything more to say on it. Victor is doing some research on a couple of things, but he knows exactly what we're looking for. Uh, there's just some things that he needed to say to all the stuff that they did to be able to see about getting it directed over here wider. So you might want to lend a weight and talk with Kevin as, you know, before you send something off the prosecutor so you have the full story here. Um, you know, I think we might have mentioned something about the Bluetooth capability, but we were more looking at the phones. This, and you would ask even then, well, can we get it to our desktops? And this would obviously do it. So it's not just the road crew that would have to see it. You could see it yourself. You know, I'll leave it up to you when you talk with Victor if you have the ones with the speakers on. Also, where, you know, whether it's you or Linda, someone else saying, hi, so-and-so, I see you in such and such vehicle, and guess what? You're not a township resident, or you just, you're trying to dispose of things that shouldn't be there. You know, we kindly ask you to leave. You know, sheriff's on his way, he's sitting right here. <laughs> okay, and most people, you know, once they know they'll stop, mm -hmm. you know. And then the other thing, Kevin, is deciding on what signage is posted there. So it's clear somebody doesn't say, well, geez, I didn't know. You know, that's the usual thing. You know, I didn't know I was doing something I wasn't supposed to do. I just was driving by and saw this yard waste place. Um, okay, the, um, the other item, um, and David, this is going to be you and Kevin. This is on dumpster days. At the last meeting, um, the trustees indicated 
that there was a desire to hold the fall dumpster days, and Georgianne needed to know that because she had concluded in the fall newsletter, and so yes, that's yes. being worked on now. The reason we canceled the spring dumpster days after consultation with the health department, you know, it's several items, but you know, the residents come in, they like to get out and help, you know, pull stuff out themselves, interact with the employees, and we just can't have that. <laughs> Um, and there was a concern, since we didn't have time to react with signs, that uh, last dumpster day would have been the first week of April, and we received in the middle of March, you know, the notice that as far as the conditions that we were to operate under, um, and it was just a concern that you might run into an individual that's going to be resistant and get in too close to the employees, and we just didn't want that. So we, after consultation with the health department that was canceled. Um, so what we'd like to do this time, the biggest thing here, which I'm sure the prosecutor will prove it, but Linda, this is where we've got to send the information into to them, and you'll want to talk with Kevin on details here also, is one, we got to have clear signage explaining again, stay in your car, you know, just pop the trunk of the trunk, you know, most of them are going to be trailers, pickup trucks, that sort of thing, that the Individuals that are there from the township will remove it, will separate out recycled materials versus non-recycled material, um, load it up either into the bucket or toss it into whatever bin it's going into. Um, the question is, Kevin, what you've got to look at, um, which might reduce our risk as opposed to, you know, you and Eddie and Daryl being involved in that if you just outsource the whole thing. I realize this is a one-time deal, but I'm sure we could find somebody to do that, whether it's a local, um, you know, individual that has the equipment, if you don't, because you probably don't want them using our equipment, um, but somebody that has their own backhoe that can do this on those three days. I mean, they got to be available for three days. You know, you can tell them what, what they need in the way of staff. They can come up with an estimate. Um, our other options are talking with the Solid Waste District or the county engineer as far as what employees or individuals they might have, if they even want to get involved in something like that. And then um, the third option is our waste hauler themselves, who ultimately is going to you know, put the dumpsters there and then take the dumpsters away. Perhaps they'll want to take care of the whole thing and keep things, you know, separate out the recyclable items that have value to them versus the waste. But I know that puts a lot of burden on checking that, so I don't want you to spend a lot of time on it if you can, but unless, David, you have some other options, or Kevin, you do, those are the options we have, and yet we can still, and it's all predicated on health department at that time. And we can't guarantee there will be a dumpster day. We'll put it in the newsletter there's going to be, but we know between August and October, things can change and we may get a different order, you know, from the state or the health department. But at least we can prepare for it now. Okay, and then Linda, once we know exactly what's there, you've got a template here to send to the prosecutor. That's just a formality of saying, okay, Jerry, here's what's happening. You know, will this qualify? And you might even be able to couch that ahead of time as a, we're not sure exactly which direction it's going to, but we're laying the plans are these different scenarios eligible? And those I'm sure he's going to say are. Okay? I don't know, David, if you had any other suggestion on dumpster day. No, the uh, only question would be how often do we run into somebody who doesn't want you to maybe touch their vehicle or wants to offload it themselves for one reason or another? Well, maybe they've got things that they want to keep commingled with their garbage, or maybe they got some scrap metal in a bucket, but they want the bucket back because mm -hmm. that's where they put their scrap metal. How often do you run into this? I don't think that would be a problem. Uh, because for the most part, anybody who, say, comes here and wants to separate and they or want to keep, uh, keep their containers. Especially if it's, no, if they pull in and the signage is good, stay in your vehicle, you know, it's, it's not like you're going to be 50 feet away. 
mask, particularly when people are around, and uh, you don't uh, want to get too close to people, that um, the general same, public. Like that you're in a pickup truck, you know, you still keep your distance. You're still going to yeah. be able to talk. But, hey, don't throw this out. Don't throw oh. that out. Oh, no problem. Oh, you know. What you could, uh, another option could be, we'll help you take it off, or we'll take it off. But if there's an issue there, you come, you take it off. Uh, you take it off, put it on the ground, and then when you're gone, we'll just put it in the in the back row that way. Right. It's a little more work, but it, it gets rid of the human contact. Yes, absolutely. I don't, I don't foresee a problem at all, really. I mean, especially You know what you got to do as far as you know one so so linda might be able to couch this ahead of time to get some of the prosecutor to get the ruling on it because i know he this one's going to be a pretty easy one he's going to say yes to um but the real thing is which direction you're going to go and who's going to do it and get them shored up so what were those three days october first through the third okay so that'll come up real quick well, I'm sure I can have an answer tomorrow, but someone local that would be more than willing to take that. Well, there, if you already know someone, but and, but we got to count on them that yeah. they're there. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay, the other item was, and Colin, this actually is. Well, before we go on, just. There's still or so uh, here, so go ahead. When do we have to have an answer on this, Georgie? When do you want to get the newsletter out? of interest is like it was at the first public hearing we had 
you know, where we used up every chair we have here in the hall, obviously if the state mandates stay the same, we won't be able to hold that here. So the discussion was versus us getting one of the um, available meeting type, you know, whether it's go to meeting, whether the, I forget the other one, the light share, something like that, and then the Zoom, but the county already had um, <coughs> the, uh, they're paying the subscription fee for Zoom, which I believe theirs will go over 100 individuals potential to get on. Um, and the first question was, would they be willing to allow the township to use their system for a public hearing? And Colin, where that would impact you is for those that have internet access and a, a computer at home, if they want to see things and if they want to be seen, they'd need a webcam or you know the camera on their computer. Uh, they could participate from home um, and right now the county commissioners all agree to that. The county administrator agreed and they just said coordinate things with Sandy Strozak but there wasn't a whole lot of detail yet. But the good news is Columbia Township has to go through the same thing. So they agreed they'll also do it for Columbia Township. And we know their public hearing will definitely occur before ours. So hopefully that can work out the bug. But what we'd have to provide, not all residents will have a um, computer or internet access. So we have to make accommodation for them. So the discussion was at the prosecutor's office, and, and here's where it would get dicey, because now we have to limit how many can come in here by keeping them spaced out. Um, we could have also the computer set up here where you're online, so you can all be part of the public hearing. And I'm assuming at this point in time that we, being the trustees would have to go to the county facility where it'd be broadcast from um, together with the whoever presenters are going to be and probably the attorneys, but anyone else would be doing this from home. Other than the small ones that don't have access, they would be allowed into the township here and what we originally thought we could use is just a projector and project it on the screen here. Um, Georgian's been in contact with a consultant we've been working on on this technology. Um, his recommendation is to make it crisper and easier, and the cost is really the same. We don't own a projector. Any projector we've used before, we borrowed or the presenter brought in. Um, he said the um, flat screen versus projector, kind of a wash. And with an 84-inch flat screen running with the HDMI cable, that's what he's recommending instead of the projector. Um, so what would happen is um, those individuals would be here at the township. I still don't know if has got all the detail if the camera would go to them so that they are participating or if they were sitting out at their question, whoever is moderating here repeats their question that they can participate in the public hearing. The notification would obviously go out to all adjoining property owners as it did before. But we would also have it on the township website so anyone can see it. And then as soon as you send it out to one person, they may send it out to other people. Um, so the thing is, that's where the concern, if it gets the limit, and I don't know enough about this, and that's up to the host. I know they can stop somebody so they're not speaking, not being heard. I don't know if they can cut them out. So that say there's someone that they really have no real interest in it, they're taking up a slot. Um, and it, you can't say just because they're not local, because you can be you know, not live here, as we know we've had with another developer that we turned them down, live in California, but owns property here. But they have to have some interest because we want to make sure the priority goes to adjoining neighbors. Next is township resident. 
Next is somebody that owns property. Then it's if you have a business in the township. Last is you're outside the township, and I don't know why you're watching this, and maybe you're considering coming to the township. But only if there is a limit that gets too high. I'm hoping that isn't the case. Um, but that's the framework of what's going on. Things aren't completely worked out yet. And that's the option versus us trying to put the whole system in ourselves right now, which we already know, um, just for the cameras alone and a cable, was, you know, to do it right was $6,000. And that's why we said, ah, we're going to go with the small system first and see how things work out. And, um, but if this keeps going long term, we may have to do that anyway. But initially, we're going to work with the county system. Um, Do they have the hardware to put on the meeting? Will we have that? The county should. That's why we're using theirs, David. Again, things can be subject to change, but that's the framework. I had the discussion. I haven't talked with Jim Cordes, the county administrator, or Sandy Strozak, his administrative assistant. I talked with Jerry because... Uh, Jerry Ennis from the prosecutor's office agreed since he had a uh, commissioner's meeting that he was at that uh, he would discuss it with them. And then since we had that discussion, there's been additional discussions where Columbia Township and Jerry indicated Columbia Township definitely will occur before ours. So that'll be a chance to see that this all works. But they definitely have the hardware. They have the subscription. They are the host. Um, I told Jerry I'm leaving up to them that the terms and conditions they signed in purchasing that allows this to happen. You know, since we're, you know, we're like a sub-government agency in the county, and it, it appears that's the case. I obviously didn't read terms and conditions uh, that they, somebody there, would have accepted. Um, but that's the plan right now. So we would have a system here. Just for those, you know, that don't have access at home could come in here. So that'd be a limited number of people. So say 10, 15, you know, getting above that might be a little dicey. Um, they could come to the township and we'd have to explain that to people. Um, the others would be sitting at home, but they would be participating live. Um, the county would have to control how they're recognized. Realize the county... And using Zoom today, they're not really using it that way. So this is slightly new for them also. What they're doing is just streaming their meetings live. They're not interactive. So you're not getting on and participating. As for the public hearing, you know, like this meeting, we allow people to participate. That's not a requirement. And some uh, public entities don't allow that. Uh, at a public hearing, though, you must allow that. So that's the difference. We've, how do we do that in today's environment versus, well, let's just wait till this coronavirus is over and sorry, everybody, we'll just sit and wait um, type thing. So that'll be slightly new for them, but they do have the equipment. They feel they can do it. Um, the, um, the last one I wasn't able to get on, I had told you that the Oh, when the uh, District 9 Executive Committee was meeting on the road projects for both the Round 34 and the new methodology for 35, that was all done through a Zoom meeting. Okay. So that, that's what the plan is. That's just a general framework. I don't have all the details yet. Since Colin's here, I just want to explain what's going on. You know, ahead of time, and how we'll try and accomplish where we can meet what the statute is, but not hold this up. Okay. And then, Georgian, you've been doing an awful lot of work here on this technology. Is there anything else you need to cover?
you'll work with Linda to make sure she has all this information since we got to keep that separate on the accounting for the CARES Act expenditure too. But that's why, David, we're looking at, I don't know that, uh, I mean, we can, we need a resolution even on the, the flat screen right now that he say when that timing is or you're waiting for the quote to come in. in your free time if you can check with the Department of Administrative <laughs> Services just
Um, we are only going to expend this with the COVID funds. And the reason we're doing this is we don't have a choice. I mean, what other suggestion do you have in doing it? No, no, no. oh. Okay, I, and the funds, that's have, the funds have been released, and we're not gonna use all those funds. The funds have been yeah. released, and if you don't use, we got to have them lined up by October. If you don't have them allocated by October, you know what we do with the funds, right? The money goes back. Goes back to the county. Okay. And you know what the county does with it? They, probably try to find a way they to distribute keep it. it to every other entity to expend it. Okay, so as much as I think I'm as, as fiscally responsible as anybody else around here. But the question is, these funds have been made by the federal government, and anything we don't use for the residents of Amherst Township will be used by somebody else. So the money's going to be spent. You're not gonna save one taxpayer dollar by being tight here at Amherst Township. You're just giving it to somebody else. And I don't think they're going to be as a fiscal watchdog as close as we are. But all of this will go to the prosecutor ahead of time to get a ruling on. And the prosecutor, though, he's not aware of this detail. He's aware of the overall and the need of holding public hearings. Now, we've got the same thing. This is something you need to be aware of, and I think you were there, which I, I was hoping Denny be here so he'd hear it too. We've got another situation where we just had with a three or four public hearings with the BBA. Remy stepped out, but four? So we've had four public hearings with Board Zoning Appeals. At the last meeting was the first time, and probably because of some of the timing and, and uh, medical condition with one of the members, that the chairperson decided to enforce the mask rule. And one individual, for whatever reason, did not want to comply with the mask rule, which was fine, that's their, their right. But because of that, we had to do some changes and get an alternate to fill that slot um, before we could go forward. It, it just created some friction among people that I really prefer not to have. Those people are valuable people here at the township. For the most part, we pay them $30 a meeting. Yeehaw, $30 a meeting for all the time they have to put in and analyzing that stuff. So where we might use this, again, won't be long term, but at the same time, we, we've got to get the ruling from the prosecutor because I don't want to lose a valuable person on that board, um, both the one that's got a medical condition, the other one that prefers not to wear a mask, is can we, with the, the Board of Zoning Appeals, can they also hold their public hearing if they're remote, but it all can be shown here? Um, I know the state allowed us to do that, but I don't know if they ruled that down to our other board. So that's something to find out, but I certainly don't want to be in the position where we're out there begging people to fill these boards again. You look like you're concerned there. You know how difficult it is to get people to serve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I don't want to lose them, and if this is a thing we have to do, we'll do it. So no, it's just to purchase the equipment. It's, uh, again, I, I hope asked, it's what's got the option? No. Neil, okay. that's what the question is. Are you purchasing things for a single use or is it something with some long No, we would continue to use them. It's just typically we would not, since we put most of our funds go to roads, you know that. Yeah. Um, and we're always looking at it where things are tight. So we normally would not, we would not make this expenditure and we would just allow everybody to come in here. But this is a different time right now. But it will be used in the long term. I mean, there was, when this hall was was first, this addition that was put on, which we did with the state tax, and we used to receive the state tax, which we don't receive anymore, yeah. is, you recall, um, it was actually Denny wanted to get a flat screen to use for the training, and, you know, that we'd have with the webinars versus being right at their screen. And we decided, nah, 
we're not going to do that because of the expense. Well, guess what? You just got it. It wasn't put in to help with the training when it's a group. It was put in because of what we need for the public hearing, but now we can use it for the training. Chris just brought up the new Roth option. I talked about, well, before we have just roll it out the employees, we have the Ohio, Ohio Public Employees Deferred Comp come up and do training. Well, you know what that's like, trying to get somebody to come up for three or four people. Well, guess what? If they can do it online, it makes it easier for they'll be more inclined to do it, be more flexible to our schedule versus their schedule. These cameras could be on Exactly. Yeah, you said Betty wants to hear about it. May I please speak on his behalf? Yeah. And let's get this meeting moving on. Please. Please. Can I just say that the savings is the relief from the year of the budget that long term. Two years ago, we had all this here in the long term. We talked about a big three meeting for training for the business that we could pull up the weather if need be, if there was some kind of disaster or storm come up for our emergency. Technology changes. What do you think the life is on that? About five years, five to ten years. I mean, you'll be able to use, you'll be able to use it, but yeah, if it's not used a lot and taken care of, it'll last up quite a while. But five, ten years, the technology will change, and you want something more modern. Yeah. I mean. I'm sure there's a big bulky big screen, the original big screen TVs with the whatever in the back. Yeah, I'm sure they're around and I'm sure there's a few of those that still work. But you know, they're obsolete right now. We have you know, more than more than one use. It's gonna okay. be a one or two meeting purchase. But that it's, it has a use, has a use and we will use it. We know it, it can have a use for more than one item, but as long as we use it, that's, that's All right, is there any one other discussion on the CARES Act? Okay. Um, the last item of correspondence also from the prosecutor's office. Um, this deals with the, if you recall, Trustee Abraham said he checked with the prosecutor's office on the um, commercial building department, which we currently have. And I just given the prosecutor's response, not all of the attachments that he cited in the ORC and the Ohio Administrative Code, but essentially he has confirmed after research uh, that yes, we would still be able to maintain our building department or work with the city of Amherst if we decide to change from who's currently providing those services. Um, but this isn't an either or county or township, the way the prosecutor's reading this, it's actually both. So uh, any type of business owner that's doing any type of modification, they can go to either the county or the township, so the prosecutor says, obviously for one-stop shopping, they'll use the township since they're coming here for the permits um, with the zoning inspector and working with our uh, fire department that he just wouldn't see them ever use in the county. Um, if when the county gets one, realize the county doesn't have a building department in place, but that has caused some confusion of prosecutors given a written information on that. Okay, so that's it for correspondence in the CARES Act. Um, report zoning, Remy? Yes. Uh the new homes for this month would be one. We had 17 permits total for the month. 
New homes year to date will be at 10 now. New written complaints, there's two new ones, which I will be uh, addressing tomorrow. Other than that, everything is pretty quiet. Where have all the homes been, uh, Remy? The new homes? Oberlin uh, Road. For most of it. What about the home I'm staying with? Is that this year, too? or Staying in Rice Road? Yeah. They're still going along. Okay. Those permits were issued this year? That is correct. We got 10 total for the year. And then two there and eight in Oberlin? Or? All right. My question. Okay, fire prevention officer Chris Nyar, do you have anything? The hydrant at the Bricklayers Union Hall is installed. Should be in service by the beginning of next week. They have to flow test it and hydro test it. That should be done by the end of the week, so we should be in service by the beginning of next week. I would also like to get together with the trustees on a schedule for fire inspection fees for new commercial buildings in the township before too many of those are submitted so we can get it taken care of before anybody comes to get their zoning or building permit. Is that for us something you can do in the early morning, like 7 a.m. time frame? I can tell you it won't be before September 7th, so we can have all the trustees together. Well, my, I have all facts and figures put together for you guys, so whenever you want to have that meeting, it's a little easier for me to explain it to you than send everything to you. You can look at you know, 200 pages of something. Is that not September I have 8th? it down to one page, which is, I think, a lot more beneficial time spent. So it's something that should be considered. Is there is it stuff that you just want to present when we get together to meet, or is it something that you have electronically that someone? Can I have review? electronically. I can send it to you. Yeah, if you do that, um, then I'll get it out to everyone ahead of time so they can review it before the meeting. But I just know that it'll be it'll be after September seventh, uh, David, because I know that's when Denny's going to be back. He'll be back for the seventh. The next meeting is what the eighth. Is it the eighth? Well, then it'll that's be the eighth. Okay. It'll be after the eighth. Okay. Unless we come in that same day, then Denny will be available on the eighth. Okay. Any questions for fire prevention officer? All right. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Roads, parks, and cemetery. Neil. Superintendent Marsh. Yes. Before you move on to Kevin, I just wanted to make notice because we kind of skimmed over the sheriff. We ran into uh, Deputy Lawson and kind of question why you have not been here and sheriff's committee is not allowing any of the deputies to go out to township meetings to public meetings at this time so i just right. wanted you to be aware of that if you didn't know all that. right thanks chris
Who does the company out of Norwalk? Who does the concrete work out of Norwalk? Who's that company that we have do work here before? You were set in stone, there's another one. You recall the name of the company? Out of Norwalk? Yeah, who is that? Well, um, while you're thinking on that, well, Kevin, anyway, before my we question is, should we get three bids, two more, at least get two more ballpark bids? Okay. Kevin, have you, have you estimated what the concrete material alone would be if you were doing it in-house? No, but I could have that. Yeah, because I think that's the, that's the real thing you're looking at is what the differential is, David. If you take out the material, the difference is our guy's doing it, which means he can't, like the three storm sewers he had to repair, he put you know, on an emergency basis, they can't yeah, do yeah. that, or you pay someone else. So it's only the, the, it's only the labor and any adder they have on their profit is I'm really differential that we're you know, talking about here. Yeah. I'm, I'm all in favor of doing some concrete work with when and where we can. Well, I'm thinking, I know we got our internal thing that says we got to get three quotes, so we we'll get two other quotes. See so what, make sure they're in the ballpark. Also, a couple other things. You know, see if you know, within their quote, if if they run uh, under budget, maybe they could extend it out. Perhaps there are things we could do to work with them to help to get a little more bang for our buck a couple more pieces of concrete, things like that. Yeah, that's why I just wanted to get this on okay. to see it. I didn't want to put any more time into it that it was just going to get the uh, here, Here's where the difference will be, Kevin. Um, let me, before we go on to these estimates that you have, was there anything else to cover that? No. Okay. Um, what makes this easier, because Chris, I didn't bring the amount showing the carryover, but I already know, you know, we've appropriated more than we're taking in. Um, and looking at what we'll do is um, you go ahead and get your other quotes, and then what we'll just do, David, is give him, once he has those other quotes, if he's able to get them, yeah. give you the go ahead based on the budget. We got Aspen Fields. several things here. The one I'm just going to skip over because you guys all should have. This is the repair on Stang Road by Dennis Concrete. Um, not for the resurfacing issue we had, but the settling for the Okay, Before we replacement. get to that, uh, Hidden Valley. Um, I have a question. That's Aspen, Fieldstone, and Hidden Glen. Are those the streets? And Berry Ridge. And Berry Ridge. Yeah. All righty. Um, those four streets. How many sections are in Aspen? How many sections are would you estimate over there? Eight. Eight sections on Aspen? Yes. Now, is that going to take care of Aspen itself or is that going to go into Oak Knoll and Fieldstone? Sorry? Is that going to go into Oak Knoll and uh, the ends there? This, yeah, and that's new concrete. So Aspen will be completely redone. Basically finish what we started a couple years ago. Correct. What about that one section on uh, D Drive at uh, Hidden uh, at Hidden Tree? Like there's one or two sections right there that are just it's non-existent. Yeah, all all at D Drive. I, actually, yes, but those two or three sections right there on D Drive are really bad. I They're better off telling you what. I think so, on yeah, that's, that's a terrible spot, but there are a ton of terrible spots. I know there are. All right. 
Mr. But David, I want to move on here because I don't want to get hung up in all this detail on the streets, you know, or showing every single pothole. We want to look at the overall here as far as the funding. Now, Chris has already said for these particular ones, the money's already been allocated in the account, not knowing which ones were available. What I indicated, what might impact this, I want you to look to the next year now, what you have in your packet are the estimates here for additional concrete work in Hidden Valley if we're successful in obtaining some grant and loan money for round 35. Looks like this. Okay, mm -hmm. this document. And you'll see we're trying to do as we've done in the previous years is with the just putting a... You got it? I'm almost it's right there. Your left hand's holding it. Yes, yes. I just pulled it out. I just found it. Okay. This is for Moss Canyon. This is a $60,000 project, roughly. And just to put this as far as what the township's responsibility is, um, based on the current rules, we would be looking at uh, $25,400 in grant money, $10,000 in loans, and $24,600 in local mass. Say roughly twenty-five. dollars I may have to adjust it. I do have the new uh, methodology here if you care to see it, but I'd much rather wait till we have a work session at one of our 7 a.m. meetings to go through the detail because they did make some adjustments in that. And we may actually have to increase the amount of our participation to get the appropriate points on that. So my point is we can spend that money now, but it's money that's not available for the next year also. And this particular one was the uh, Moss Canyon Fieldstone intersection. Um, we also have to decide here as we move forward because these grant applications are due in November. November may seem like a long way out, but it'll be here in a heartbeat, particularly with all the other items we discussed that need to be done. So uh, Kevin did have the engineer's office make two quotes on Dewey Road, one going from Middle Ridge up to the um, Am city of Amherst line, and the next one from the northerly line of the city of Amherst up to North Ridge. You can see the one is just under 109,000, the other one is 93,000. So almost a 50-50 uh, split here, um, with the first one being roughly 3,400 feet, the next one just a little over 2,800 feet. Really looking at that, Chris, knowing what we have coming in, I don't see where we're going to be able to take a full $200,000 project in a single year. So we're only going to be able to do one. Um, I'd already left a message with Mayor Costello to see if the city of Amherst wanted to participate with a cooperative agreement as we've done elsewhere whether it's in round 35 or round 36. And again, this is all, there's no guarantee you get funded. Uh, we'd have to apply for the funding, but by splitting this does two things. One, it makes it easier on our budget. And I already saw Chris's head, she's in agreement. We can't do this as one, it has to be split. But that also gives us more flexibility if Amherst wants to participate so the whole road gets done and we don't leave the city section undone they can do round 35 or 36 because we don't know what their demands are. Okay, so are you in agreement we have to split this? Yes or no? no? I would prefer to do it in one project, oh, but sure. if the money's not there, we'll have to split it. Okay. Oh, um, and Kevin, in your mind, from a technical standpoint, or when I talk with Mayor Costello, because again, I've left messages, um, does it matter if it's when the southerly portion is done in the township or the northerly, or it really doesn't matter? No, they can tag on to either one. That doesn't matter. The worst section, though, is the south portion from Middle Ridge okay. to Ackerman Road or to. Okay. Well, I'm going to just let Mayor Costco know. I mean, it's up to him, but that way they have some flexibility, too, whether it's in 2021 or 2022. Um, but, you know, and then it's their decision. They don't have to do it, but it would make more sense if we can partner together. And as you know, we'll need a cooperative agreement since most of it would be township, just as we've done with some others. And this one, we'd be the lead agency, and we just have to do the apportionment. 
And Chris, I think you've been involved in one of those now. We don't do them a lot. Were you? You don't remember that? Okay. Um, you did get the one with the county engineer, though, that we just did on Fang Road. So it'll be similar. Yeah, essentially, they just take, they'll estimate both, and let's say that Amherst is 20% of it. When we bid it out, we would hold the public bid for the full amount. We would manage the full amount that's there. So when the funds come in, there'll be funds going to both entities in a, in a portion meant, and both entities will pay their apportionment. Okay. But it'll just be everybody a, awarded to one contract. Okay. But I will talk with the mayor on that, Kevin, and you know, I'll keep everyone informed as to what the decision is. And I'm sure he may have to go through his council on that anyway. Sure. Okay, then the next document, this is dealing with the, um, actually I'm before that I've got um, Linda. I, you're actually before this on stormwater. Do you have anything to report? I've got one question. You mm -hmm. um, in the front, uh, we've removed all the the trees and whatnot on the in the front of the building. I mean, you know what happened there? Or? Well, the two bushes that were left are the trees, whatever they were. The roots were going under the foundation. Building. Yep. As far as I'm going to check that. 
as far as I could tell, looking at it, they're in exact compliance. Okay. Well, if you can let the individual know that turned in that um, complaint to get back to them before we close it. I will. Okay. Then there was the other one um, that was turned in about the inoperable vehicles at North Ridge. I know two of those vehicles were taken care of, and the gentleman was planning on getting the others put under cover. Is that done? No, that was North Ridge? Yeah. Yeah, North Ridge you could close out. That's completely done. Okay. Thank you. The noise ordinance will handle later. That one with the drainage there at Deer Run, is that one completed? Drainage? Yeah, it was, there was a uh, 904 Deer Run concerned with drainage installation at 902 Deer Run. I didn't, I didn't recall that one. I didn't go out and look at that one. Okay. Drainage issue, you say? Yes, and I don't know the specifics on this because this is all truncated, but... I'd have to... I'd okay, have to if you can check on that, and then how sure about... I, I know you've been on the maintenance issue there at Rosedale. Is the property maintenance issue, is that still yeah, open? Yeah, and they're, they're keeping up on it. I mean, somebody's, somebody's mowing that lawn. I don't know who. Okay, but you want this left open then? Uh, Rosedale, I think you could close it because it seems uh, it's not a problem. But did you get back to the individual there that turned that in? I'll, I'll have to contact them, yes. Okay. Okay, there will be the need for an executive session. I do have one last item, though, to cover before that. Um, we agreed at the last meeting that we were not going to amend the township noise resolution. Uh, so there is a letter prepared to come from the trustee uh, to go uh, to the individual that had recommended uh, that amendment. Uh, and David, I assume you've read this? Yeah, I skim read it. I'll reread it. Okay. I'll reread it again. But I did skim read it. I see that. My only question is is this something you want to sign tonight without Denny, or do you want to hold no, it for Denny? No, well, we can do it at the next meeting, but I just want to make sure okay. you're okay with the yeah. language that's in here. It's pretty much what we discussed at the last meeting. It, yeah. Okay. Linda, if you can just change the date on that to be the next meeting. Um, or actually, um, you could probably do it on the 7th, because I think they'll be here on the 7th. As long as we... Oh, and put on the 8th, and we'll have him. Because the reality is, then we can just send the email out when you have it to come and sign it in your office, and it can be mailed. Okay? That last paragraph, do you want to say we hope you and your guest or you and your guests? It'd be plural. Should be plural? Yep. Okay. I just said, oh, no. mm. All right. Okay. If you have anything else, send it by email so it's in writing and make it easy, David, and make I sure will, everybody I will, sees I will. it it's that it's has it. to sign it. Yeah. Okay. All right, do you have any other business? I have nothing else. Anyone else here? Okay, then there will be a need for an executive session, so I'm gonna make a motion that we enter into executive session at 8.40 uh, p.m. Um, per ORC section 121.22 
this in regards to an item that's uh, pending port, pending in a min imminent court action. This deals with the Amherst Consolidated Property, and all it is is uh, really in this case to bring everybody up to date as of the status. Reality is, Kevin, I'll leave it up to you. There's nothing's changed on the roads at all, so you wouldn't have to be there if you want to start getting ready to close up. Um, Remy, if you're available, there there could be things that deal with zoning, but it's not something you have to be at. Um, and Linda, the same thing. I don't think you have to be there. Um, so I'll leave it up to you, Remy. If you want to participate, you could, but you wouldn't have to. Um, so that'll be my motion. A second. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to return to the regular meeting from executive session at 9.20 p.m. Second. Yes. Yes. Okay, is there any other business? I have nothing else. Our okay. next meeting. Uh, hold pencil in for Thursday, September 10th at 7 a.m. at the township. Okay. With um, no other business, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second. Yes. Yes.